Can you elaborate on how this all started? Tell us about the raid. Yeah, first, this is a fantastic Christian academy, highly respected. Many parents, uh, you know, they send their children here and they're having a normal day. And what happens? Uh, the, the state of California, uh, Department of, of Social Services, uh, they find out uh, from a third party, far leftist uh, site on the internet that there's allegedly uh, some kind of uh, you know, drug dealing or uh, weapons. Uh, it was just a, a, a smear on this uh, wonderful Christian academy. So what, what do they do? Instead of investigating responsibly, they come in with 16 troopers, uh, two canine units, and a host of social workers just totally blitzkrieging the whole uh, campus, looking at everything, interrogating everyone, everything. And then when they found out that there was nothing there, they doubled down and decided to push them even further and declare that they have to be licensed by the state. And if they're not, they're going to be levied large fines against them. It's, it's a, a, an atrocious violation of uh, religious freedom, as well as parents' rights over their children and, the, and the, the teaching and training of their children as well. Yeah. Tell us, Brad, why should every Christian in private school be very concerned about this? Yeah. If the state gets their way, and they are willing and able to, uh, to require this school to uh, be licensed, uh, what we're talking about is the state's requirements that this no longer effectively be a Christian school, because the school will no longer uh, be able to uh, restrict the sexual activities of the young people. Uh, they will no longer be able to uh, give them clear boundaries regarding religious instruction. This will no longer be a Christian boarding school. And, and not only this one, but the, the very few others that exist will be effectively uh, shut down and secularized overnight. And if they get away with this, then the next step will be to apply these same principles to private Christian schools throughout the state of California. And it's not going to stop in California, Wendy. We're, gonna, we're, we're going to expect to see this copied in, uh, in other states across the country, uh, starting with the dark blue states and then moving on in. So. It's a, a very serious concern regarding the, the rights of a private entity not receiving government money uh, to be able to have a religious school, religious training, quality academics uh, with parents wanting to be able to and being able to send their children to that kind of a school for that kind of training. That will be completely wiped away in the free United States of America. And that's why we at the Pacific Justice Institute have stepped in. Jack, I want to begin with you. You're obviously being targeted. Uh, who is behind this latest attack? Yeah, this time, Laura, I really feel like I'm being harassed. I've been sued by the state twice now, and they've lost both times. And the attorney that instigated the second lawsuit against me is now taking it to uh, sue me personally, and this time asking for damages and legal fees, which would lead me to bankruptcy and, and ruin my company. Yeah, now, the, Jeremy, hasn't this person harassed Jack over email as well? And again, this is now wanting a cake for to celebrate gender transition. I mean, uh, what does that cake look like? I'm not. I'm yeah, not yeah. I mean, that. certainly, it's very unfortunate to see the kind of uh, emails that were sent to Jack. But we can't forget the state's role in this too. The state, in its open hostility to Jack, has clearly created a lack of tolerance for people like him. And now we see private individuals you know, stepping into the shoes of the state and trying to do to Jack what the state couldn't do. And which the Supreme is Court, it. Supreme <laughs> Court said you cannot target people and offend their religious sensibilities in the way that they were trying to do when the first go around when it came to the cake for the same sex wedding. That's right. You know, the Supreme Court said this kind of open hostility to religion has no place in our society. In Colorado and now its citizens didn't get the message. Yeah, and Jack Governor Jared Polis, leftist of course, 
governor of the state of uh, Colorado was ultimately, you know, had to roll back this, uh, pull back this lawsuit, but basically saying the private individual involved, well, that person can go on and sue you, and that's what's happened here. Are you an object lesson for the whole country that if you dare to stand up for your own religious beliefs, you will be tarred, you will be demeaned, and frankly, yourself dehumanized, and they've really hurt you financially, really hurt you. Yeah, you know, they, they really have. The state took away 40% of my business, which was my wedding business, the first go around. And the thing is, I serve everybody who comes to my shop. I welcome everybody, and I'd be glad to create cakes for anybody that comes in. But I don't create every cake and every message that people ask me to in a cake. So. And Jeremy, uh, this gardenia uh, person, this is just a, this is a mission. I mean, this is an, a mission to send a message. Don't you dare demand equal access to express your views, because our views and our beliefs trump yours. You're a bigot. That's the message. Any c Christian conservative who thinks like Jack thinks is a bigot. That's what they want to say. The, the goal is to silence Jack, to banish him from public life, to financially ruin him, and to send a message of intimidation to people who share Jack's beliefs, that they have no place in public life, have no right to earn a livelihood, and follow the religious conviction simultaneously. Jack, the attorney for the plaintiff here is saying this is about honoring uh, the dignity of individuals transitioning. And that, that has to be honored across the board, regardless of your particular conscience or religious beliefs. Your reaction, are you dishonoring people's dignity? Well, in this case, the cake that we were asked to create was a cake that was blue on the outside and pink on the inside, and the colors were specific to celebrate that transition. And while I'd be glad to serve transgenders or gays or anybody, I just can't create every cake that I'm asked to create. And in this case, this was a message that I couldn't create, and we tried to convey that to this individual. We'll serve you in any other capacity, but this is a cake. This we is will serve you. We serve everybody. Yeah, yeah they, they serve everyone, and they're still targets. This is ongoing harassment. We'll continue to cover it. Both of you, thank you for being here. A street preacher armed with a speaker, a microphone, and a camera strapped to his chest is now banned from the village, the Pride Parade, and any event related to Pride Month after being arrested yesterday during a commotion here at Church in Wellesley. Now, uh, this neighborhood was not the first stop on the religious group's street tour yesterday, and I'm being told it will not be their last. Tonight, we take a look at the fine line between freedom of speech and disturbing the peace. If you don't like what someone's sharing, if you don't like what someone has to say, our cameras captured verbal clashes that erupted in the village as a leader of the religious group Christ Forgiveness Ministry began amplifying his beliefs. Would you tolerate me as a Christian? Go away? Okay, so you're a bigot. David Lynn, seen here on the microphone, was telling passersby that he's, quote, coming out of the closet as a Christian. All of this was also being live streamed on the group's YouTube channel. So you tolerate me as a Christian? As long as you tolerate me as a gay man. Within 15 minutes, members of Toronto's LGBTQ community clapped back, hoisting signs that read, Love is Love. They've been on guard since last month when another preacher named Dore Love took to the streets here in the village preaching explicitly about homosexuality being sinful. There was no arrest in that case. Last night, police responded about 30 minutes after the group's arrival. A patrol officer spotted the commotion and called for backup. Let's turn the microphone off. That's not the main have. issue. Well, it is right now because see all these people around okay. here. So you are literally right now. I'm not causing, literally causing, causing anything. No one told them to block this side. What did I do? I'm back up. I'm with him. Back up. Lynn was then put in handcuffs. The charge disturbing the peace.
We don't have enough evidence currently uh, to charge him with anything that relates to hate speech or hate crime. However, we would like more uh, videos to come in from the community that shows what he was talking about. Yeah, but you're pushing religion into people's faces. The, the village was not the first stop on the group's itinerary. Hours before the arrest, in another video posted to their YouTube channel, Lynn hit the streets in Kensington Market. You are impinging upon the freedom and the ease of the people here. Police were also called to the scene to help keep the peace. If people were out here talking about Santa Claus, you wouldn't have a problem. Outside the courthouse today, here's what Lynn had to say about his arrest. I shouldn't be in this position. I didn't do anything illegal. We're on a part of a Toronto tour where we're going all over Toronto for the next seven days and sharing the gospel to everybody. Now, if you've ever been by the Eaton Center, you've likely seen this group before. They're set up seven days a week right at the corner of Young and Dundas. Uh, now, we don't know what neighborhoods are on their agenda, but Lynn does tell City News that they plan on taking their message to all of Toronto's 25 wards.